Hello, let me welcome you at another training video. Uh, this time, we will talk about the smart print services. My name is Michael Demmel, and I'm a pre sales manager and a trainer, and I will guide you through this product related video. Now, as it was stated in the beginning, we will focus on a smart print services application, an application which is intended for your end user computer. After it's been installed on your computer, it can provide additional features like client spooling, the failover print, the local device monitoring, and the secured printing. So it can work in both active and passive mode, where the user either has to interact with it or uh, it will not see it at all. Now, during this presentation, we will go through all these features that I've listed here, and I will explain them first, the way they work, then I will also show some application examples. So let's get it started and focus on the client's pooling, which is the first one on the list. And the client's pooling is a feature that is intended for someone who is, for example, producing large files on some distant locations where you don't have the print server, as I will explain later. So let me just start with an explanation of how this works. Let's say we will start with first with the standard printing uh, with the MyQ server, followed by the part where the client's pooling is used. So let's say you've got a standard server with a lot of users, a lot of machines. Everything, all the jobs are sent to the print server and released from the print server to the machine. This would be your main office where all these things are used as it's normal, as a standard installation of MyQ. But there, there could be a distant office, office which does not have a print server because you would like to have only one print server at a central location. But on the other hand, you would like to print securely on that site. Another problem might be that there could be a low bandwidth connection between the central server and this distant site. So how to solve it? The actual solution would be the client's pooling. So what you will do, you will install the application on your computer and make sure that all the jobs are sent to the application first. The application will automatically get the job and produce a special metadata file. Important for you to know is that the actual print job is stored on the hard drive of the user's computer. Instead of the actual print jobs, the print server gets only the metadata file file in which you've got information about the user, the print job, and more important, where the job is located. Now, the important thing is that this job is not parsed, so you do not have any details about the number of pages, color, or stuff like that. So, some of the things, uh, some policies might not be effectively enforced, because logically the server doesn't know what is on the site, I mean on the actual computer, so that way some rules might not be enforced like I've mentioned before. Now when it comes to the actual printing, what the user does, he comes to the local machine at his site, logs in, and at that moment the server sends the metadata file to the embedded client. The embedded client then knows where the job is located, and that way the job is sent from the application to your embedded client. So uh, it doesn't have to travel uh, all the way to the server and back to your machine because it's just shared from the application to your embedded client. Now the last thing will be that the uh, server will do the accounting together with the embedded so everything is properly accounted. Now, when it comes to the advantages of this solution, uh, we can just mention that it significantly reduces the amount of data transferred between the main location and the distant one. The another one will be that you will have a full secured pull print, so you don't have to worry about somebody else you know, getting to your data. The security is there. And you've got a full job accounting. So this was the explanation of how the client's pooling works. Now let me just show you a few examples of how you can actually use it in your office or uh, how it should be used at the customer site. I've got two examples for you. The first one would be, like I've mentioned previously, a distant location without a print server with low bandwidth connection. 
It can actually be some graphical studio. And you can imagine that the graphical studio might be producing quite large files. And definitely you will not want those files to be sent to the server and back to the machine. Especially if the connection is not really the strongest one. It might take a lot of time to, you know, upload it there, up and then download it to your embedded client. Instead of that, everything is done locally. The jobs are sent to the machine. And the only interaction between the site and the server is the moment where the metadata are sent and uh, where the statistics are uploaded to your server. So you've got a full and secured printing without the need of having a print server on that distant site. Another example might be a situation where you've got a company with just one print server but multiple locations. So let's say we've got one company with one company network but three different locations. And there could be some supervisor who travels among these sites. He's got the client installed in his computer. That way he communicates always with the one very print server. If he's at location one, because the client you know, sends the host name of the computer to the main server, he can go to any machine at location one and release the print job, because the machine will know which host name to contact and download the print job. Which also means that if that guy travels, and now he will be at location three, the same situation is there, because he's just communicating with the one, the very same print server, and he can use any local machine because his computer where the job is stored is identified through the host name. Another option which this application offers you is an automatic fallback print, a solution for a case that the server is not available for some kind of reason. And of course, we've got a few options, so I will just go through uh, you know, all these options to explain what this can do and uh, how it can help your customers. Starting first with a very basic fallback print with a direct release. The way it works is that once you've got the application installed, all the jobs are first sent to the application, which the application will either send to the server, which is the normal way, or in a case the server is offline, it will send it directly to one selected MFD, or printer of course. Now the disadvantage of that solution is it's using a raw print and there are some limitations when it comes to accounting, because of course the job that is directly sent to machine cannot be fully accounted. On the other hand, for a small company, this could be a very good thing because the user doesn't have to worry that he will not be able to print because it's just automatically sent to the nearest machine. Now this very thing can then of course be extended by one more feature of MyQ and that's the MyQ device pooling, a feature which we are explaining in a slightly different video than this one. The difference comparing to the previous solution is that this time it can use the device pool options for the direct pull and delegate print and that way you've got a full accounting problem of this one might be that it's not available for all the machines. So before you will deploy that at the customer, I would definitely recommend you to check the documentation or contact us support or pre-sales departments for details about the supported machines. Another option on which this uh, application has is a fallback print where the system remembers your five last used machines. The way it works is that when you, if you are in the online mode, the application together with the server keeps a data about your five last used devices. That way, if the server goes down, the application knows which machines you've used and uh, when you print, it can just pop up with a list of these machines. Now what's really good about that it is that this application is also checking the status of those machines. So in a case one of them will not be available or will be broken, it will just inform you about that and you will not be able to select it, like here on my example where the Samsung machine is unavailable. So that way you can be sure that your job will be sent and released. 
Now, as in previous case, this feature can be combined with device pooling and offline login. But like in a previous case, there are some limitations. So first, check our documentation or consult with support. Uh, that was pretty much the same situation like with the last five use printers. But that could be a thing that the application will pop up and ask you to provide the host name or IP address of the machine. This might not be really, you know, for a common user, but sometimes it can be handy, for example, for your IT admin. The situation is then the same. Based on the selected machine, the job is released. And like in previous case, it can be combined with a device pooling and offline login. Last thing I would like to mention about a fallback print is some application example. So as it's pretty clear from all these things, this is a solution for a case your server is offline due to maintenance or some hardware failure. In such a case, the jobs, instead of uh, being sent to the server, are sent to a selected machine. Now what's the advantage then? Let me just explain that on two computers here. Uh, the, the one where the server is online and the one where the server is offline. In both cases, if I'll hit the print and select one of the printers, I will have to select the one and only Windows printer prepared for me. So I, as a user, I'm not annoyed uh, by, you know, things that I should not be annoyed by because I will just need to select one printer and be sure that the job will be printed. And that's the exact situation here because you will have just one Windows printer for the user and by selecting it, you can be sure that the job is released. The only difference in the offline mode might be that if the server is offline, a pop-up window may appear, but of course that depends on the selected option. Next really important feature of MyQ SPS is the network detection option where the client can automatically detect the network and that way relate to the local print server. Let me just first explain that. So let's say we are here now in the network one. I've got my application here, which now communicates through the network with a local server. Now, when the admin installed the application, he provided a definition of different IP ranges or different networks and that way related servers. So my application knows, uh, you know, if it is in one network to which server it should relay. Which also means now that if I will move from one location to another, the application first connects to the network and as it recognizes the difference, for example here in a subnet, it automatically knows that it should start communicating with a completely different server. Same situation is that when I move to another location, same thing will happen. Based on a change of the network, it will again start communicating with a different server. So that way the local server is selected automatically based on the predefined list. Now when it comes to the application, the situation could be that you would have the multi-server installation managed by the central server where a worker will be traveling among these locations. You can also use it for installation where you've got multiple servers, but they're independent, so they are not even managed by one central server. In both these cases, the feature can be used. And what is the difference for the user? It's pretty obvious because he will have only one Windows printer he has to select and he has to use for printing instead of having multiple drivers, multiple printers, multiple settings. That's just one thing he has to select regardless the uh, location or, you know, uh, if he's traveling. Every time, just one printer and everything will be printed properly. Another feature this application provides is a local print monitoring, a solution for someone who uses the machines that are connected, for example, through USB ports. The way it works is that when you've got the application installed on your laptop or computer, it automatically checks your spooler. So it's using the standard USB LPT and DOT ports. 
The important thing is it's checking only the spooler, so there is no real feedback from the machine. The information that might not be that precise as it would be for the standard network printing. On the other hand, you will have some kind of an estimate of how much the machine is used, how many pages were printed, based on the amount of pages that's been spooled for that very machine. Then uh, the application collects all the data and reports them to the server, which is able to provide it in the report. So that way you can have an estimate of how much the device is used. Now when it comes to the application example, again this is one is from a real situation we encountered. So let's say, imagine a hospital where each doctor has its own office with a small desktop unit at the uh, at a desk. That way you've got a lot of machines, a lot of machines to maintain, uh, a lot of machines where you don't know how many pages are printed. And if you would like to get some control, or at least you would like to you know, do the analysis to be able to replace those machines, this application could be really handy because you can install the MyQ server in the background, install the application to every single computer of each doctor, and that way uh, it will automatically collect the data and in your MyQ server you will get a central reporting for all these small USB machines. The last option I would like to talk about is a secured print. Now, the preferred option is printing using an IPPS where your computer will use IPPS to send the job to the server. But of course we understand that this might not be a solution for every single customer. In a case the IPPS cannot be used, there is an option that again you will use this application which will store the job locally and then open the secure HTTPS transfer over, uh, over which it will transfer the jobs to your server using the secured port and of course everything protected by certificates. So that's pretty much everything about this application. So if you'll be interested in more details contact our support or I would recommend you to look and watch our training videos. When it comes to the technical ones we're explaining much more about all these settings and applications. So. That'll be everything, and let's see each other at another video explaining another feature of MyQ.